Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting system of equations from Russia. I made a video on this a while ago with parameters A and B, and I know you know that I messed up on that video. I made a huge mistake, and I apologize for that. I'm not going to remove that. It's just going to stay there. Um, I mean, obviously, that is incorrect, and you can see by the comments that it's kind of incorrect. I just wanted to fix it. But while fixing the problem, the solution, you can't just replace a video with another one. You know, I just wanted to upload this with numbers. So this time we're going to be dealing with numbers, but it's pretty much the same thing. The only difference would be you're going to pay attention to the values of A and B because sometimes you may not get any solutions. By the way, I also found out after I made this you know, a PDF file and notability and all that stuff, I was almost ready to record. I realized that uh, there's actually a really nice graph to these, uh, which, by the way, don't resolve very easily. But if I can get it done, like if I can show you the intersection points, then I'll also share the graph with you, not in this video, but as a link that you can see. All right, anyway, so let's get started. We have these two equations. They kind of look similar, except uh, the top starts off with x instead of y, and then x minus y times the quantity, and the bottom one has y minus x times the quantity. And the denominators are the same, the numbers are different. What happens if they are the same? Then that's something to think about. But let's go ahead and apply the same procedure, but this time I'm going to simplify in a much easier way. It's not going to take that long, hopefully. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and add these equations, and then I'm going to subtract these equations, and then we'll go from there. If you add these two equations up, hopefully you notice that you're going to get x plus y, and then you're going to get minus x plus y times the quantity. I skip some steps. I hope you don't mind. And then that is, that'll be divided by the common denominator, and that is going to equal 2 plus 7 over 4, which is equal to 15 over 4, because 2 can be written as 8 fourths, right? So what I did here is when we subtracted these, we get x minus y. We also got negative y plus x, which means x minus y, times the same quantity. So I just factored this quantity. Make sense? I hope it does. So now this is going to give us, to keep a long story short, again, I don't want to keep it too long. We'll take out x plus y. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to get 1 minus square root of x squared minus y squared divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared plus y squared. And that is going to equal 15 over 4. All right. So this is from addition of these two equations. Let's go ahead and subtract them now. We got, and I can show you the subtraction if you want, but I mean, it's no big deal. When you subtract, you're going to get something similar. But let's go ahead and do it for fun. We have x minus this, and then minus y plus x. Since they have a common denominator, I'm just going to subtract the numerators and divide it by the common denominator. That's going to shorten the steps a little bit. And their difference is going to be 2 minus 7 fourths. 8 minus 7 is 1, so it's going to be 1 fourth. Make sense? So now notice that we can put these x minus y's together. And then this gives us x minus y times the quantity square root of x squared minus y squared. And that is divided by the square root of whatever, right? And this is 1 fourth. Great. So we subtracted. This time I'm showing my work. So don't get, at, get mad at me because I didn't show it for the first one. But it's going to be very, very similar. So for this one, we have the x minus y as a common factor. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. x minus y will be multiplied by 1 plus. Notice that this time we're getting a plus sign, not a minus sign as we got before. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that first equation that resulted from adding the two equations that we originally had. And so that way you can kind of see our system together. So the other equation that I got by adding and simplifying was this one. I could even cut and copy and paste it over here, but I'm not going to be that lazy. Well, uh, sometimes I can be very lazy, by the way. But anyways, I'm just going to copy it um, from memory. Or how about a piece of paper? Okay. So this is going to be the first equation that we got from the adding the equations. And this was 15 fourths as far as I remember, right? So this is our new system. So here's what we did. 
We had a system of equations, first and second. We added the uh, first and second, we got equation number three, which is this one. And then we subtracted the equations, one and two, we got equation number four. Now we're going to work with equations number three and number four. Guess what we're going to do? Are we going to add these again? Nope. Here's what we're going to do. I hope you notice that these expressions, except for the denominators, well, denominators wouldn't matter, by the way, never mind, look like conjugates. What do you mean by conjugates? By conjugates, I mean stuff like x minus y and x plus y, or square root of a plus square root of b, and square root of a minus square root of b. And as you know, when you multiply these two things from difference of two squares, you get something like a minus b. So you got rid of the radicals by doing that. That's what we're going to do here. So pay attention to these expressions as I kind of circle them. x minus y will be multiplied by x plus y. So this is multiplication. And that's going to give me x squared minus y squared. Awesome, right? And then this expression will be multiplied by this expression. And notice that they are in the form of square root of a plus square root of b and square root of a minus square root of b. If you write the one as square root of 1, that will be taken care of. And their product is going to be 1 minus the quantity x squared minus y squared, right? From difference of two squares. This is just the numerator. And the denominator is just the product of two equal things. Square root of c times the square root of c is just going to be c. Do you see what I'm talking about? Hopefully you do. That's going to give us 1 minus x squared plus y squared. The radical is going to disappear because we're multiplying square root of something by itself. Make sense? And obviously, since we're multiplying these two numbers, that's going to give us 1 over, wait a minute, 15 over 16. I mean, not 1 over, okay, you get the idea, right? The product is going to be 15 over 16. Let's go ahead and erase these useless things, I mean the formulas, so we can have some room. So, here's what I got. What is that supposed to mean? This means a lot, actually. If you look at it very carefully, you're going to hopefully see what I see. And that is, these two quantities are equivalent, so they cancel out. Now, here's the question we need to ask. Can the, this quantity be zero? Obviously, if 1 minus the quantity x squared minus y squared equals zero, I can't write zero. This means x squared minus y squared equals 1. So obviously, you don't want this to happen. So x squared minus y squared is never going to be 1. And when we get the results, you can check they're not going to be that. Okay, with the a and b, it's a different story because we also have to check for which a and b values we have real solutions. So that was a really interesting problem, but I messed up big time. So this is hopefully a fix, partial at least. So what do we get? We got something real valuable. We got difference of two squares. And you're like, so what? Well, if you consider the first equation, just the first one first, first things first, you're hopefully going to notice that this expression actually appears twice, here and here, right? So if you plug it in, and obviously this is equal to 2, you're going to get an equation. And in the second one, it also appears one more time. And what was the first equation? It was this one. Same thing, but x and y are switched partially. And it was this one. And remember, this was equal to 7 fourths. And notice that here we have the x squared minus y squared value. So if you do those replacements, here's what you get from there. I'm just going to keep it real short. We get x minus the square root of 15 over 4y equals 1 half, and y minus square root of 15 over 4x equals 7 over 16. And now we got a new system, but this time it's a linear system. Therefore, the solutions are fairly easy. I'm not going to bore you with the details. You can solve it easy peasy, lemon cheesy, piece of cake. Those are going to be the x and y values. Again, I, as I said earlier, this is x, y, and you can check it out if you want. You can go ahead and plug it. No, no, don't do it. It's, it's true. But I'll share with you the link to the graph of these relations. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.